Добре, продължаваме с следващият ни лектор и това ще е малко странна презентация. Мариан е един от основните хора, организиращи OpenFest, системен администратор от над 20 години, но за съжаление реши да се премести в Канада и всъщност днес презентацията, която ще видим от него, ще бъде запис, но след това той ще успее да се включи, за да може да отговаря на въпросите. Тоест някъде по средата на лекцията ще бъде вече лайв. Ще изчака да приключи записът, който ни е направил и след това ще имаме време за въпроси. Така че, ако може да пуснем записа. Switch here, start. Hello everyone, I'm happy to speak again at OpenFest. I'm really humbled that the program committee chose to have my talk as the closing talk for this 20th anniversary of OpenFest. I would not present myself because I have done so 18 years in a row and I believe that most of you know who I am. So today uh, we will be speaking about uh, MySQL and uh, MySQL indexes specifically. But uh, before we start talking about the indexes, uh, we'll start talking about queries. So uh, you would have, uh, normally uh, you would have a database that is in production, uh, you would join a team and uh, you would be given the task to optimize something. And uh, the first problem is to identify what is that something. Usually, uh, you would not be given a new query. Uh, you would need to identify which of the currently used queries is creating a problem. And a lot of the times, the queries that are creating a problem yesterday were not creating a problem. So they were working. <laughs> what you need to do is uh, try to log those queries. And MySQL gives you a lot of opportunities to uh, log information. In this case, uh, there are the general log and the small query log. The small query log is used specifically to log only queries that are small. The general log, however, is used to uh, log all of the uh, queries that are sent to your database server. And by default, uh, the output uh, for these uh, uh, logs is normal log files, which means that in order to read these files, you actually have to have file system access to uh, where your database is which in uh, most production environment means that uh, you would have to be granted access to another machine oh, because your database should not be on the same server where your application resides, right? So uh, this is a problem because this would create uh, uh, a security hole uh, on your system by providing your developers access to uh, your database there should be another solution to this problem. And uh, that other solution is uh, the log output table. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of people using that, but this is actually quite nice way of getting all of your logs accessible directly from your MySQL. <laughs> so that is a nice trick to go circumvent the file system access. However, uh, there is one important thing here. Swall log logs obviously swall queries, but general logs logs all queries. And on a busy server, this would mean thousands of queries that have to be logged, which means that uh, you're over already overloaded <laughs> MySQL server or servers when you enable uh, a general log would become even more sluggish because you are now writing more and more data. And this is why uh, most books that you would uh, uh, read would tell you not to enable general query log 
unless the situation is really, really dire. And uh, here I would tell you how not to enable general query log and still get almost the same functionality. Now, uh, if we switch to log output table, uh, what happens is that MySQL creates two tables, uh, general log and swell log, and uses the CSV st uh, storage engine, which means that uh, the data uh, for these tables is stored on the disk in uh, CSV files. So, we have the CSV files, we have swell log and general log. Let's see what we can do. Uh, you can when these uh, when you switch to well, log output uh, table, you now have access to the uh, logs directly by querying via uh, SQL. Uh, this type of logging is slower than direct file format because you're essentially going through another storage engine specifically to write to the disk and uh, in a format that is not the most efficient format. But uh, the functionality that this gives you uh, uh, has significant benefit for you. If you regularly enable and disable uh, the logs, no matter if it is the general log or the slow logs, uh, you actually have to uh, make sure that you run first tables from time to time because all of these uh, enable and disable are leaving uh, open file descriptors within MySQL. So if you do this on Chrome, make sure that you have first tables afterwards. Now, uh, with uh, the table format, in the general log, you have the event time, the user and host that uh, actually uh, did the query, the thread and server IDs that uh, executed the query, the type of uh, the query, select, update, insert, so on, and the parameters to that query. Not much information. However, in the swell log table, you have significantly more information when the query started, when, uh, uh, when the, how much time the query took, how much time of that time was uh, actually the query in walk state, how many rows were sent to uh, the client. This is usually a thing that you need to be very mindful. You, most of your applications don't need a million rows. Most of them need like a hundred rows or one row. So then rows examined, database, last insert ID, and so on. I'm sure that most of you have seen a slow walk in MySQL, the log file. Now you have this data in a SQL format that is easy to query, and uh, you can create some statistics out of that, which is very, very nice. Now, moving forward, how we can abuse the slow walk? <laughs> I told you that uh, enabling the general log is a problem. <laughs> so uh, the slow log can be configured to log almost as much as uh, the general log. But depending on what type of MySQL you have, you'd see that you have a lot of options. So uh, the standard MySQL options, so the Oracle MySQL options that uh, are given to you for all of the uh, uh, MySQL versions are one query time, which defaults to 10 seconds, which means that any query that is more than 10 seconds would be walked to the swallow walk file. Let's say that you do not have general walk enabled and switch this variable to one second. <laughs> Essentially, you would be logging a lot more queries. Or let's say you put this to 0 0.1 second. At that time, now you're logging almost all queries that are uh, sent to your server. Very nice. The other option is uh, to uh, log all queries that are not using indexes. Essentially, this presentation. Enable this, forget about this presentation, and go home. Uh, not really. <laughs> But uh, the next thing is swallow admin statements. Uh, admin statements like uh, create index, author table, uh, all of these are admin statements that you may actually want to uh, log uh, when they are swallow. And uh, swallow lunch time. Uh, so how much 
time we have to wait for uh, the query to start. These options are available in any MySQL, 5, 6, and newer. Uh, now, what we have in Percola and MariaDB, these are variants of uh, uh, Oracle MySQL. We have log throw rate limit, which is very nice because we can say how many queries we want. So if we use uh, the throw query time and set it very to a very small number, and then combine this with the walk throw rate limit, now we can achieve better general walk than what we had before. The next thing is uh, walk throw verbosity. Now, depending on MariaDB or Percona, you have different options for uh, what you can put in uh, verbosity. Either query plan, the explain, so automatic explain, the inodb information, or with Percona, additional micro time, which is significantly better. Also, you can add profiling, query info, and a lot of other things. This is providing more information to you in the swallow log, and uh, this uh, significantly improves your ability to resolve issues in the future. Now, uh, swallow log filter uh, is an additional thing where you can uh, filter which types of queries you actually want to be logged. So for both MariaDB and Percona offer you the options to limit the queries that are doing file sort, file sort on a disk, full join, full scan, temporary table, temporary table on disk. But MariaDB also allows you to uh, log the queries that are uh, of type uh, query cache and query cache miss, which is quite nice for you. Uh, you now have significant uh, uh, granularity in uh, what you can choose to be logged so you can reduce the amount of IO spent on logging and yet get a lot of useful information uh, and you can enable disable that on the fly. The next thing is uh, that you may not want to use uh, the slow walk or for certain reason uh, that may not be uh, feasible for your setup. Uh, for Oracle MySQL and MariaDB, you can use the MySQL logger plugin. And for all uh, SQL ser MySQL servers, you can use uh, ProxySQL. And uh, here I have linked the link to the query logging functionality of uh, ProxySQL. Uh, very nice way of putting something in between your application and uh, your database and leveraging that for more advanced uh, um, features like the logging in this case. Now, uh, we'll continue with uh, understanding how MySQL actually uses the indexes. The first and most important part when you're using the indexes is that indexes are based on what you should have in the where, order, and group by clauses in your query. So indexes do not care about the actual tables or the order of tables, the order of uh, select columns or how many columns you are selecting. They care only for what you have in the where. And then, one interesting thing that most people don't know about MySQL indexes is that any index created on a table would have uh, an invisible brother starting, and that is the primary key. So if you create, uh, let's say you have a table that has ID, primary key, name, and address as uh, second and third column, and you create an index on name. That index is not only on name. That is a compound index of ID and name. So your ID is primary key, but your name key actually has the primary key and the uh, name column. 
which is something that most people really don't know. This is important, in a bit you understand. MySQL selects always only one index, or sometimes even zero indexes if uh, uh, MySQL deems that uh, your indexes are inefficient to uh, do the job. The next thing is column order in uh, uh, compound indexes. So an index that is on a single column is the primary key. <laughs> That's the only key that is on a single column. If you have an index uh, on another column that is not the primary index, that index is now a compound index. Compound means that it uses more than one column. So this compound index is including your primary key and your column. That is very important because uh, indexes have to have the same order of columns as the where clauses in your query. So let's say again you have the table that has ID, name, and address. And you query uh, that table based on uh, name and address. You create uh, one index for name, one index for address. You have just created uh, three, uh, three indexes that have the primary key. The primary key index, the name, and the address. Uh, Masco would only choose one of those indexes. However, uh, if you want your query to run faster, you'd need to create an index that is based on name and address. But let's say you create the index address name, and in your where files, you have name and address. So first column that you're referencing is name. In this case, what happens is because you're using B trees, so this is a tree structure, if you do not follow the order of uh, keys ordered in the, uh, the tree structure, you cannot simply start from somewhere in the bottom of the structure, and this index won't be used at all. So you need to make sure that when you're creating indexes, you have first identified the queries and their where clauses, their order by and group by clauses. Now, most people do not take into account that where, order by, and group by should actually have the same order of columns. So people just write whatever they want in uh, queries. And the sad thing is that uh, this actually happens with a lot of ORMs, so people don't actually know what SQL was written, and the result is uh, uh, a very inefficient SQL query. So in order to use your index, if you have a where and order by, the where clauses, name and address, have to be name and address, and your order by, if you're ordering by both columns, have to be uh, name and address, not address name. Because if your order by differs, this means that you no longer are able to combine the index for where and uh, order by. So MySQL may choose the index uh, to do the, the search for the where, to do a range search, but uh, it may simply decide to skip your index as a whole because your order by uh, also tells uh, MySQL that it has to order the data. And in order to order it, it would need to read through all of the data. So this is a problem. The same goes for group by, and if you have the free where, order by, and group by in one query, make sure that the columns are in the proper order, as in the index. Uh, so now you have to understand that indexes are stored in separate files on the file system. Why is this important? Because uh, if your indexes are bigger in terms of file size, then your actual data, which may happen when you have a lot of indexes on a, a smaller table, uh, MySQL will simply disregard your uh, index. And uh, if we have a table that the actual data in the table is smaller than uh, the indexes that are created, sometimes, because uh, MySQL cannot 
put the whole file with the indexes in memory would just opt to not use the indexes and directly uh, go through the whole file with the data. So these are interesting points here to note before we continue. The next step is uh, uh, to understand why uh, indexes won't work on your MySQL. Again, based on your, uh, if you think that uh, your table column order, uh, table name uh, order or column order in the select is important, no, it's not. And you should not care about the select part of the query. Everything that you should care about is after the where part of your query. If you do not have a where part of you in your query, then um, there is no index that would help you. <laughs> the next thing is uh, uh, how to identify insufficient indexes. Now, this is where probably a lot of uh, uh, you that have played with MySQL already know about cardinality and selectivity, but I have to mention these things. So cardinality is uh, a column in the show indexes uh, from table uh, where you can see a number and that number corresponds to the uniqueness of values within that column uh, that your index is uh, referencing. So what does this mean? Let's say we have 100,000 entries, 100,000 rows, and from those 100,000 rows, we have only two unique values for this column on which we have created index. <laughs> this is not very, very efficient because uh, when we are working at a B3 again, this would simply split the tree in uh, uh, two parts, and you would have 50,000 records here and 50,000 records here. So every time when MySQL needs to query this data, it because of the index, it would already know that 50,000 of the entries have to be read. At that point, 50,000 uh, rows are too many, and MySQL would try to consider other indexes that may result in uh, uh, better selectivity, so this means less number of rows returned back to, uh, to the client. Now, selectivity is the uniqueness uh, divided by the number of rows. And this would always give you a, a number between uh, 0 and 1. And this is, uh, the, the more closer you are to 1, this means that the better your index is. And now let's look at some uh, more concrete uh, examples here. So uh, we have uh, a WordPress and uh, the WP posts uh, table there. Uh, so this here has uh, four indexes. We have the primary index, then we have the post name index, then we have type status date index, uh, and we have post parent index, okay, five indexes. We have also post author uh, indexes. The important part here is that uh, first I have cut some of the left and right columns regard, uh, from this output to make sure that it fits in, uh, in the slides. But the important information here is first, you have the primary key. That's nice. That's on column ID. Then you see that we have the post name. That is only on the post name column. Then you have the type status date, where you can actually see that the index is a compound index of uh, four columns. And those four columns are uh, post name, post type, post status, and post, uh, sorry, post type, status, date, and then ID. It is very nice that they're ordered in this way in this table because you can understand from my previous 
slides that now we have a compound index of five columns, not four columns. And one of those columns in the column ID actually uh, repeats itself two times. Inefficient. <laughs> Now, uh, the next thing is cardinality to the right there. Uh, what you can see there is that uh, uh, we have six cardinality for, uh, all, uh, for the primary key, which means that we actually have six rows there <laughs> because uh, uh, this was a brand new installation. And uh, we have cardinality of uh, two for the post author. So we already know that we have six rows in this table and we know that uh, for those six posts we know that they were created on by only two authors. So this table is now split into three for one author, three for another author and that's it. Uh, moving forward uh, how you can calculate the selectivity of uh, your uh, index before you create it, that should be uh, the case. Select count distinct from the column that you want to create index on, uh, divided by the number of uh, total rows that you have uh, in this table. Uh, if this number is below 50%, so below uh, 0.5, and you don't have, uh, and you have a better index, Masco would most probably discard your index and not use that. Now, years ago, uh, when comparing Masco with PostgreSQL, you would simply think, okay, in PostgreSQL, I have a table with all the information, how many times I have uh, requested certain index, how many times I have updated certain index, and so on. Indexes were first-class citizens in PostgreSQL, while they were like afterthought in MySQL. Uh, these days, in MySQL, we actually have uh, uh, an option to select these uh, statistics, and we'll see that. But before that, uh, one more example here for selectivity. Uh, if you have 100 million rows, 100 million rows is a big number, and yet no, it may not be extremely big table. So uh, adding a, an index on a column that is tiny and has zero and one would create two parts of your table that are returning 50 million rows. Yeah, that's somewhat helpful, but unless you have other where clauses, uh, 50 million rows is a lot of data to be uh, requested from the file system and shoved through the network. So <laughs> it is essentially a pointless index in this case. Uh, you would need a better index that would use the next column that is used in your queries. Now, there is another situation. If you, we have the same index that is dividing our uh, table 90-10%, then this index would actually be quite efficient because instead of uh, returning uh, 50 million rows, it would be returning 10 million rows, so significantly less uh, data should be returned. And combined now with another column, this would be a better index. Now, the important part is that in this case, uh, selectivity would not tell you if it is uh, actually 50-50 uh, uh, or uh, if it is 90-10. Uh, you need to know this data uh, in another way, before you create this index. Now, uh, a final example here for uh, selectivity with fictional numbers. Let's say we have 20,000 rows in uh, 20,000 WordPress uh, posts. Uh, now, 17,000 uh, of those were made in different days. Uh, out of these 
20,000, uh, they were created by 2,500, uh, 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 sorry, uh, they had 2,500 unique uh, names, and which is strange, <laughs> and they were created by uh, 20 authors. Now, uh, the calculation here clearly states that uh, if you create an index on post date, that would be your best index. Because if you create an index on post author, this index is never, that would never be consulted. All of the time, it would be better for MySQL to just go and uh, read the whole table there is no point for it to consider this uh, index. So, just with a little math, before we actually dig into the uh, data, uh, we already know, should we create that index or not? Now, the index statistics that I mentioned. Uh, these days, we have uh, uh, performance schema, if enabled in MySQL. And in the perform performance schema, we have table IO, IO weight summary by index usage. And if you use this query or similar query, you can actually see your index, which indexes are uh, have been used. Uh, and keep in mind that if uh, your table was uh, not queried, your index is not queried, so you won't see that in uh, the statistics. Now, this is important because uh, you may say, okay, this index is not used at all, and delete it. And uh, let's say on the Sunday when your cron runs, now your database uh, becomes extremely sluggish because you have removed the most important uh, index for your cron job. Now, uh, bad selectivity and cardinality of the index is a problem. Wrong column, uh, column order is a problem. Wrong group by uh, is a problem. Wrong order by is a problem. And wrong order by has another problem that I didn't mention, and that is indexes are created uh, ordered. So they're either uh, ascending or descending. And uh, if the index was created asc uh, ascending, this means that the first number is the lowest number and uh, uh, all the numbers going down through the tree are increasing. So if you want to select with order by on descending while you have created the index uh, ascending, uh, Masco cannot use the B3 because it cannot start from the bottom of the tree. It always has to start from the top. So that is extremely important part when you are using uh, order by. Uh, in most cases, your indexes would not be very helpful with uh, not in situation. Uh, a lot of the times, MySQL actually tries to uh, optimize out uh, this situation and uh, create, uh, it may create a subquery or for bigger queries, even temporary table to uh, avoid this, uh, this thing. And another problem with uh, indexes is that a lot of people think that Wyke is so much, so good operator and it always gives them what they need. However, because we are talking about a B3, <laughs> again, uh, we can start from the beginning of uh, uh, the values, from the leftmost to the rightmost, and uh, if we put uh, a percent sign there, this would make sure that your index is now invalid, because you're saying this index can start with anything while wow, you know that the index starts with specific thing, so it cannot be used. It's the nature of the trees. Um, another thing is uh, people decide to get uh, really knowledgeable about MySQL and created uh, hash indexes without actually knowing how, how hash indexes work. And because the operators were wrong, and the index were not uh, was not used at all most of the times. Now, uh, index scan uh, methods. Uh, we have uh, rules index scan where we can uh, look at the data and uh, 
uh, try to identify a uh, certain part of the uh, tree and because the index is ordered, as soon as we reach certain part of the tree, if we have, for example, greater than, uh, MySQL can return all the values after that point in the index to the, uh, to the bottom because it actually knows uh, that from there on they are ascending and this is where you're going. Th and these are all of your values. So loosely we knew that after this point, these are all the roles that we need to return. Tight index scan is a uh, similar situation where we need to uh, get the data, uh, but uh, we need to pinpoint specific part of uh, uh, the index. We need to go through the whole index to identify this uh, information. And with MySQL 8.0 and plus, uh, we have also a skip scan range. If you have ranged queries, uh, you can skip part of uh, uh, the index and directly go to a certain uh, parts deeper in the index and provide this information. The skip scan range works also with multiple ranges. So uh, analyzing the queries, you usually would get a query like that. I really hate seeing something like that. I, the first thing I do is uh, rearrange that. And I go through a, a few transformations. First, uh, I'm ordering it to see what it is selecting, from which tables, and what are the where parameters. Then, uh, the next thing is uh, to uh, short, create shorter names for the, uh, for the tables, so it's uh, easier uh, to read the where clauses. And the second thing that I have done is, uh, you can clearly see that I have moved the joins from the from to the where. Uh, this is not possible for all types of joins, but uh, in this case, uh, it is a perfect example. Where in the where now, I can focus on what's common. And the last part of the, the transformation says reorder the where only visibly. Uh, so I would not reorder this in a production environment. I would just do it on, uh, in a text file to see uh, what is where. And you would now identify two columns here from the items table that are uh, this important part of the query. Now, if we run the last part here, that would be the explain. Uh, uh, before I explain, let's see what indexes we have on uh, items. We have uh, three indexes where we have primary, we have invoice ID, and we have user ID, which is a compound of uh, user ID type and uh, rel ID. And we see that we have a million rows uh, in this table. Now, uh, we don't have the time to go through explain and uh, uh, explain analyze and the format tree. The only thing that I would mention here is that after each explain, you need to run show warning slash g to see uh, what uh, what did MySQL chose as a uh, structure for your query because uh, probably eighty percent of the time it won't be what you are expecting to see. Now. Uh, Let's go back to that query and uh, run an explain on it. Uh, an explain on this query uh, is telling us, okay, it takes like uh, 0.6 seconds. It has some indexes on these columns, but the important part here is on the first line there, you see that the rows returned are 1 million rows. This is huge. And then uh, because of the equal reference, this means that uh, now on the second line, you're uh, doing one million comparisons. On the third line, you're doing one more million comparisons. And on the fourth line, you're doing only uh, two more uh, million comparisons because for each row that is there, because of the reference type, for each row, you would be referencing the first uh, uh, result from the first line. Now, uh, let's uh, look at the same query, but with an index on row ID on the items uh, table. What you see is that the first line now has a key on row ID. It returns const 
and it returns one row. And what you would notice is that the query time now is 0 0.001 second, <laughs> just adding one index here. Now, uh, the optimization is very simple, create that index. Uh, and uh, after you have created that index, sometimes uh, you wonder, did I did the right thing? Uh, did I test it before in the performance before I created that index? If you are wondering about this, you can use the index hints. And in this case, you would want to ignore the newly created index in your from clause uh, from your select query. Now, uh, yeah, I'm repeating myself multiple times here. Uh, but duplicating uh, indexes, columns in indexes, creates a problem because you're, as I said, the index files are separate and you're creating them bigger and bigger. And if they are bigger than the actual data, MySQL would not consider loading those. Now, okay. Switch to the next slide. Okay. Uh, one interesting thing regarding bigger tables is uh, when you have a table, let's say, with uh, 50 columns and you want to create a lot of indexes on uh, uh, those tables, this would create huge index files. So you would, want, you would want to remove this and what you can do is uh, use something called foreign key optimization. So uh, what you can uh, do is create smaller tables in terms of number of columns with the same data uh, and you would be duplicating some, uh, some, some of that data into these multiple tables but now each table would have its own primary key and that primary key would be significantly faster than uh, any other keys. So now you can join this, uh, these tables uh, abusing the indexes of these smaller tables. In order to uh, preserve the structure of the application, so you would preserve the table by just creating a view uh, that would do the join for you and present the same table as before. So this would help most of the time to uh, improve the performance. And yes, I'm at the end of the presentation. Uh, in MySQL, you also have the hash indexes. They're extremely fast and very nice, but they can only be used uh, in queries where you have columns that either have equality or not equal not equal operators. For everything else, uh, they cannot be used. So uh, keep that in mind because if you use any other operator with a column that has a hash index, that hash index cannot be used. Now, uh, for the varchar text blob fields, there is one important part. When you are creating the index, you would probably remember that you are providing a length to that index. So whenever in your where quals, uh, what you're comparing is bigger in terms of size than the length of your key, the key would not be used. <laughs> And, uh, and the interesting thing is because these are varchars, text, bob uh, uh, things, it is possible that these indexes would become extremely large on uh, multi-million uh, row tables. So sometimes MySQL would say, okay, I'm, I cannot actually load uh, that index into memory to query it. And with that, I thank you and I expect your questions. Да благодарим на Мариан и всеки момент трябва да включим на камерата Мариан. Чуваш ли ни? Yes. Защо си без розовата тениска? А, сега се прибирам към вкъщи. <laughs> Добре. Имате ли въпроси към Мариан? Който има да вдигне ръка. 
На български може ли? Може. Добре. Здрасти, мерси за интересната лекция. Значи, всъщност аз имам два въпроса, един трети мета въпрос, може би. Първият е относно наредбата на колоните в индексите. А, очевидно можем да разберем защо Group Buy а, и Order Buy нали, имат различна семантика, т.е. там не може произволно да си сменяме реда на, на колоните, но не е ли тривиална оптимизацията за Wear Clause с End а, да бъдат забързани, независимо как сме ги написали? Това е първият въпрос. А, втория относно употребата само на един индекс, отново не е ли а, лесно да се мържнат тия бедървета онлайн, т.е. да се използват няколко индекса, вместо ние сами да правим компаунд индекси. А, и съответно третия мета въпрос по отношение на тия първите два, а, знаеш ли да са решавани в други бази от данни, сървъри за бази от данни по различен начин? Мерси. Okay, uh... Първо ще започнем от последният ти въпрос. Да, Oracle и PostgreSQL определено решават проблема с индексите много по-елегантно и нямаш нужда от толкова сложни компаунд индекси там, защото оптимализера ще се възползва и ще ползва повече индекси. Сега на вторият ти въпрос. Мърджването на bdv не е тривиална задача. От друга страна, избора на индекси ще означава, че ти трябва все пак да направиш някакъв индекс кан в много от случаите и а, това ще ти генера I.O. MySQL са решили, че по-добре е да се избере само един индекс и да се използва този индекс и от нататък каквото се случи такова. А, затова е много важно да имаме добри индекси. И а, относно Wear Cloud-та, би било много тривиално да можеш да ги пренаредиш, но в много случаи се оказва, че на логиката на енда се променя, при което а, ако го гледаме така, имаме компонент индекс от три елемента и а, ние сме си направили wear clause така че винаги това, което а, ще мачваме да бъде първият елемент от индекса, това ще е много добре. Обаче, ако сме си направили а, трите wear clause да не пацват на индекса и да имаме два индекса, които могат да бъдат а, използвани, тогава при нареждането на а, wear clause става доста нетривиална задача. И за това е по-добре това да се остави на човека, който пише клерито. Само да кажа, че Мариан не вижда от тези две камери, така че може да му помахаме. Мариан, здравей! Радвам се да видя по телевизора. <laughs> Искам да ти кажа, че не съм съгласен изобщо с отговорите на твоите отговори на тези въпроси. Или поне не съм напълно, <laughs> не съм напълно съгласен. Окей, okay, допълним. <laughs> Първо последния въпрос. Разбира се, в много сървъри тия неща са решени много по-добре. В MySQL оптимизатора не е от най-най-добрите. А, за по отношение на подредбата на колонките и въобще изразите в Wear Clause, изобщо не съм съгласен, защото това няма значение. Оптимизаторът е достатъчно добър. Това, което има значение е, когато имаш смесване на а, оператори от типа на равно и по-голямо, по-малко, въобще там, където ти трябва range scan. Тогава има значение. А от, по отношение на смесването и използването на повече от един индекс, а, сега вече съм забрал точно, но мисля, че от майски от 4 точка едно, което е много отдавна, има едно нещо, което се казва индекс мърч, което в някои случаи може да използва повече от един индекс, така че тук е валиден универсалния отговор, зависи. А, 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 извинявам се, но индекс мърч вече не съществува като опция. Okay, Просто в... няма а, документирано нито в MySQL 8, нито в MySQL 5.7. Не съм гледал за по-стари, но когато правих презентацията, специално проверих за тези двете. А относно а, подредбата, Show warnings де-факто показва подредбата на query така че може да се провери тривиално. 
И, и само още едно нещо. Това слайд, слайд 25 с него категорично, категорично не съм съгласен. Това е пренаписването на Join с а, а, ключовата дума Join в а, Join с запетайки. Това нещо, а, ако не се лъжа от стандарт SQL 92, категорично се препоръчва да не се използва. Защото е антипатърн и има води до много-много сериозни грешки. Да не говорим, че с запетайки не може да направи шалтер джойн. Но това е много да, тема. Да. А което започнах там е много важно. Аз го направих, за да може да се направи логическа подредба, само човек да види къде са а, нещата, които трябва да пренареди. Да, но когато, е... когато джойнеш 25 таблици е страшно лесно да забравиш, да забравиш едно джойн условие и да направиш картезиен продукт, което хич не е добре. Абсолютно съм съгласен с теб. <laughs> Радвам се. Други въпроси? Аз ти Мариане, как е? Аз имам, аз имам следния въпрос. Каква част от тия оптимизации ги правите автоматично? И успявате ли да свършите нещо автоматично? Или просто им казвате, е това са ви бавните, е така си ги оптимизирате? Айде, чао. Нищо автоматично не съм правил до сега. Окей. Okay. Тоест, това нещо го правите вие или си го правят потребителите си лички? Перкона Toolkit а, има едно тулче за анализ на слолога, а, с което много често използвам. И другото е MySQL Spall Dump, а, за да мога да видя информацията и да я предложа в по, как да кажем, с бит вид на програмистите, с които работя. Yes, Ясно, Други въпроси? Or any other questions in English? Да благодарим на Мариан отново. Безопасно прибиране в къщи и се надяваме okay. на следващия OpenFest да си на живо. Да, да. Добре. Винаги си добре дошъл.